Well, hello again. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm going to uh, follow up on uh, the work that Michael and I have been doing together on the denial of death and its, and its role and significance in, in how we treat the other animals, um, including members of our own species. I will do so um, by giving you a sense of what the empirical evidence is uh, for some of the things that Michael talked about, and I will do so less eloquently than he has. So as Michael stated, the rallying cry of our species seems to be, I am not an animal. The denial of our animality, our animal nature, which I would contend has influenced every facet of our life. And my thesis and our thesis is the following, that many of the psychological factors that underlie speciesism and in the context of this meeting, opposition to personhood in other animals serve to drive and promote prejudice against humans. And I'm going to explain that to you in the context of the experimental work that's been done on something called terror management theory. So here's the problem, explained um, in a much more cartoon-like way than in, from a scientist's point of view than what Michael did. But So here's the issue. This is the way we think it is. This is the scala natura, a great chain of being that has uh, a thick, bright line separating humans from the other animals, and then all kinds, depending upon what system of thought you're in, you know, you've got some gods and angels and whatever up top, and then animals, plants, and soil on the bottom. It, it always looks like this. And no matter what we say, we are still, we are still adhering to this worldview. Um, we have not gotten away from this worldview, which was originally formalized by Aristotle uh, so long ago. And here we are in 2013, and, and really this is still the worldview that we adopt. So that's the way we think it is, and this is the way it really is. We're great apes, period. Uh, there's just no way out. We are embedded within the great ape clade, morphologically, genetically, evolutionarily, in any way you can imagine. We sit right there. And the problem is we don't want to be there. And just to reiterate, Camus, we are the only creature who doesn't want to be what he is. So we have a conundrum. We are great apes that think we're all that and more. And what do we do about that? Well, terror management theory is a system of thought, uh, a, a predictive theory that asserts that we are motivated by the fact that we, our anxiety about the fact that we're animals and that we're going to die like everybody else, um, uh, it drives attempts to alleviate this anxiety, to manage our terror. And TMT, as I'll refer to it, has explanatory power for a broad range of phenomena, including our treatment of other animals, other humans, and the planet in general. So I want to summarize for you some of the empirical evidence that brings all of this together under the, under the concept of terror management theory. First of all, so what's the evidence? There is again, a mountain of empirical support for the claims made by terror management theory. There are over 300 peer-reviewed experiments conducted in at least 15 different countries. 
and the experimental evidence can be categorized uh, in many ways. This is just a tiny sliver of the domain that TMT uh, is predictive in, but it's, it's relevant to what we're talking about this weekend. Um, experimental evidence for how TMT describes, explains, predicts in-group, out-group bias, favoring those individuals who are part of our group and denigrating everybody who's outside the circle, sub or infrahumanization. humanization thinking of and treating human outgroups as less than animal, as less than human. And we just saw a vivid and disturbing example of that in the video. Distancing from other animals, attempts to create distance from, dissimilarity to, or disconnection from animals, and increased negativity toward nature, possessing less positive thoughts about the value and aesthetics of the wilderness versus what we would describe as manicured or controlled nature. So let's look at the findings in these four domains and how it plays out. In terms of in-group, out-group bias, TMT argues that if psychological structures like worldviews, religion, cultural practices, provide some kind of symbolic protection from concerns about death, then we'll tend to cling to those structures and embrace in-group practices and characteristics. Likewise, we will attempt to diminish representations that challenge that worldview, that are inconsistent with that protective symbolic structure. And there's an abundance of evidence that that's exactly what we do. So um, terror management theory and the studies that have been done uh, show that if you remind a group of people about death, and it can be unconscious, it doesn't have to be um, like right in your face, like you're going to die, but any reminder of death that primes up what we're living with makes that group of people more prejudiced. It increases in-group, out-group bias and drives reliance on forms of death denial symbolized in one's own culture. We see this playing out in all the ills of our society, prejudice against other races, prejudice against other religious groups, members of, of the, our own species who remind us of different things that we find threatening to our particular worldview, and of course, how we treat the other animals. If we look at sub or dehumanization, we see this, a very similar effect, a robust effect that if you give a group of people uh, a prime that reminds them of death, this is called mortality salience, that they will actually, you can shift their attitudes to, away from seeing other humans as humans and towards the process of sub or dehumanization. It's done all the time. An extreme version of this, which we are steeped in right now, is objectification and commoditization not only of other humans, but certainly the animal world. I think we have reached heights when it comes to how we objectify and commoditize other animals. They are resources to be managed and objects to be owned. And again, this is experimentally shown to fall right out of the fact that when you prime uh, mortality in groups, they tend to move in that direction. Obvious distancing from other animals. There's a tremendous amount of very creative work by Jamie Goldberg, social psychologist, and her colleagues, showing that, again, if you give people, say, um, an essay to read that reminds them of personal death, 
It actually increases their disgust reactions towards animals, but not other disgusting items. So there's a very specific <sighs> yuck about other animals, but not about other disgusting things that have to do with bodily functions and so forth. It's very specific to other animals. And also, reminders of death increase our preference for essays about human exceptionalism. So there it is, right there. Finally, it's very, very interesting, and, you, and you, it's kind of counterintuitive, but um, if you give a group of people a reminder of death, as opposed to a control group who read, a, read a, an essay about something negative, but it's not death-related, the group that received the essay about um, death exhibits less favorable views of wilderness. They be, become more anxious about the wilderness and don't like the wilderness as much as cultivated and artificial environments. So importantly, um, it's not that people don't like nature, but what this shows is you can actually move people's attitudes and behavior around with a simple reminder that brings up their defenses against their personal mortality. It's just incredible that you could just shift people in this direction. So terror management theory shows that there is a very strong and consistent connection between psychological mechanisms that serve to devalue and separate ourselves from whoever is the other, humans, other animals, nature, whoever's not in our circle. And this phenomenon acts on several levels and across a broad range of contexts. So what does all this imply? What this implies is that essentially we are sitting in Chuck E. Cheese playing the gopher game. And what I mean by that facetiously is that addressing any kind of prejudice is like the gopher game where you hit one down, another one pops up, you bop that one, another one pops up, and you get nowhere. And the reason is is because we always need an out group. So if it's not this group today, it's that group tomorrow. And it's going to be like that, I think, my opinion is forever, because of terror management. Unless we deal with the fundamental issue at the core of all kinds of prejudice and in-group, out-group bias. So my takeaway message is that we are all concerned about prejudice. I mean, I think prejudice is the major driver of the ills that we are dealing with, Be prejudice against all kinds of human groups, religious groups, other animals, on and on and on. There are very strong psychological factors why this is the case. And unless we deal with it, at a more overarching or meta level, or if you will, a deeper level that encompasses all the different forms of prejudice, we're really not, we're gonna be taking this piecemeal one, one at a time and we're not really going to be able to have the potential to affect any transformative uh, change at all. So that's my presentation. Thank you.